So um, I felt uh, that I'm just going to just share with y'all what's on my heart today because this month we're doing a, um, a series on worship. And so really quickly, I just want to share with you all and we'll receive our offering and we'll go home. I want to share with y'all today on worship, the great exchange. Worship, the great exchange. This month we're doing a series on worship and we're defining worship. We're discussing what worship is and what it's not. We're examining the science behind worship. Wednesday night we had a teaching and in that teaching concerning worship, we talked about the aspect of worship which is serving. It's not just clapping and singing. In other words, it's not what worship sounds like, but it's what worship looks like. But this morning, I want to talk to you about worship, the great exchange. Oftentimes, when we focus on worship, we usually see it as gifts that we lay down at the feet of God to add to his already magnanimous bounty. Or we see worship as casting words at an already self-absorbed deity in which we're stroking his swelling ego with an even more exhaustive vocabulary of compliments. But today I want you to consider something. God doesn't need our worship. He doesn't. Yeah, you're special. But God doesn't need your worship. As a matter of fact, all creation worships him. The birds flying across the sky is worship to God. The fish swimming in the sea is worship to God. The wind blowing where he sends it is worship to God. And if you don't praise him, the tectonic plates all the way from Manassas, Virginia, coming through Mineral, Virginia, through the central part, they'll shift. In other words, if you don't praise him, the rocks will crowd. And let me be clear. God doesn't need our worship, but he wants it. He created you. Look at the person beside you. Tell him, even you. He created you to show forth his praise in the earth. How well are you doing with that? Worship is not just God getting something from you. It's God getting something to you. See, this month when we talk about worship, we will talk about how worship is serving. We will talk about how worship is giving of your tithing and your offerings and your time. We will teach you about how worship is sacrifice. But as you do these things as worship, don't quickly consider yourself as some great martyr for the sake of worshiping Jesus. Because God will never require something from you that he hasn't already given. Serving, he did it. Giving, he did it. Sacrifice, he was it. Please hear me. Worship benefits us more than it does God. Worship is the great exchange. God is a spirit. And all things that will be accomplished is already accomplished, but it's in the spirit. With God. Now hear me. Worship gives us access to those things. Worship creates a channel in which God releases to us the supernatural, the mysteries, the knowledge, the wisdom, the prophetic. This is why worship can't be something you sit on the sidelines of. You come to church, oh, I just need answers. Lift up your hands and receive it. It's, it's not with the excellency of speech of the preacher. It's in the worship. As a matter of fact, even if you don't get it in the worship, the worship postures you to hear it when it comes. See, it's not extra. You know how we say, the Bible says, bodily exercise, profit little. And we've taken that to mean all of that jumping and stuff y'all do in church. The Bible said, bodily exercise, profit little. When, when Paul says bodily exercise, it wasn't talking about worship. It was talking about bodily exercise. In the Greek, in the Hebrew, and in English. It's talking about bodily exercise. It says, their prophet little. He's talking to a, a Greco-Hellenistic culture that is strong about the anatomy of man and everybody wants to look good. And he says, listen, y'all working on that, but you need to consider things that are eternal. Worship creates a channel. Everybody say, it creates a channel. It creates a channel. I mean... 
DJ, when we're worshiping, if you need something from God, you got to create that space that gives God access. When we wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost when I was growing up, they would say, lift your hands. Open up your mouth and he'll fill you. Now, some of you say, well, I've never experienced that Holy Ghost and all of that speaking in tongue and that falling out. Well, you got to create a channel. Through your worship, open up your mouth and he'll fill you. Now, I know that ain't deep now. I, I want to tell it to you practically, right? If you want some water and you're going to let me pour it into your mouth, it ain't going to get in your mouth if you don't open up your mouth. How open are you to the supernatural? How open are you to hear the answers from God? How open are you? And we create that chapter. The supernatural happens when we, when we worship. Worship, although it has cultural expressions, the, even though we have different expressions of worship based upon personality and sometimes culture, Worship itself is biblical. No matter how you do it, when you do it, hallelujah, he comes down in the midst of it. Huh, hear me. God releases answers to us in worship. Worship makes you aware, hear me, of the greatness of God until what was a big thing now becomes a small thing. I'm really, how many in this room, you got some great challenges in your life, right? Now, in the midst of that worship just a few minutes ago, how great was it? It was a small thing. See, Paul was a worshiper. Paul was a worshiper. He wasn't crazy. He, he would do an analysis of everything going on with him, beat, shipwreck, all of that. But then he would start worshiping and he says, this is a light affliction for way, a greater weight of glory. Tell your neighbor, when you worship, your perspective changes. You know, as big as the LU sign is, as big as the builders in Lynchburg are, when I catch a flight out of LYH or I return back to Lynchburg Airport, it ain't as big as I thought it was. It becomes small from the vantage point of worship. <laughs> I want to tell y'all this. Worship attracts God. God is attracted to worship. Because hmm. in our worship, Jacob's ladder is established. Where the angels are, the, are seeing and descending. They know. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really trying my best to open you all up to worship. Not just empty litanies and poetic songs. Because you know what? You can sing the song in your heart and not be attached to it. That's why I tell the musicians sometimes when y'all play, sometimes it's important that you open your mouth and sing the songs you're playing. Because it'll be easy to get in the groove of it and be like, wow, that was good. But no, that wasn't good. That was great. Did you hear what the Lord said in that last chord? You know, no, no, don't don't just sit and listen to them sing on the stage because them singing on the stage and you're not singing from your seat is them performing for you while you listen. They can get the benefit from it and you never walk in it. I mean, what are y'all experiencing? Get over in it. Hallelujah. Something takes place. There's an exchange when we worship. Because he says, when you worship, you must shift out of your carnality. See, some of you can't worship because you're not God conscious. You're more self-conscious. How am I going to look? How are people going to see me? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh -uh. When you worship God, you don't worship in the flesh. You worship in the spirit. Because God is a spirit. And he that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Mm, hallelujah. So listen, when you worship, it attracts God. Not only does it attract God, when God comes, he comes and brings all things with him. 
us. We always used to say, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And that's true. But the only reason why the blessings come down is because when we praise God, the blesser comes. Mm. Worship is our weapon of warfare. He is the God of angel armies. Now, you haven't really worshiped God until it scared you. Thank you, Leonella. I knew you would help me right there. Now, some of you have no idea what I'm saying, but some of you true worshipers know exactly what I'm talking about. You have not worshiped God until it almost scared you. I ain't talking about in here. Because, you know, I'm in a room with a whole lot of people when I'm worshiping here. It's when I'm by myself. Okay, I'm, I'm going to test y'all out and see if you ever worship God. Have you ever worshiped God by yourself and, uh, and you almost felt like somebody came in the room? He was like, huh? Okay, anybody other than me? Just, just fill up a bit. No, no, for real. I remember I, used to, I was the praise and worship leader at Reach Out Tabernacle in Marnesville in Reach out tabernacle. Any of you all know my home church is a huge steel building. You know, steel buildings, you know, in the day they expand. And at night when the temperatures drop, they, you can hear it, they start popping. And so I knew that sound, right? And I was in there just playing one night by myself. Kind of like one day I came in and I heard you, Don, playing. And you and a couple of you all in there. And I just peeked in and I just walked. I just walked out. Have you ever walked in and saw somebody praying or something and you felt like it would be invasive to come in? I hope some of y'all learned that wisdom. <laughs> like, like, what you guys doing? No, I was like, I was like, I was just like, oh, okay. Because it was an intimate moment. They weren't even looking at each other. They were just like, they were in it. And I know what that is. I, I know when you get in, that, in the presence of the Lord where it's no longer about what it sounds. It's when you can get locked into three chords. As a matter of fact, just play about three or four chords, uh, Dom, and just play. And I would just want you to play it perpetually. Mm. We don't need to go nowhere. Shh. And we can stay right here in God's presence because it's not about the excellence of my skill. It's about those few chords creating a ladder. And you just keep on playing it. And right at this moment, I don't have to be overwhelmed with what I got to say to God. I can just be in his presence. Because worship is an exchange. Not only am I in his presence, he comes into my presence in there. Whew. The Bible says that they prophesy with their instruments. No words, just sound. All over this place, lift up your hands. I feel the glory of the Lord just coming right down that room. Don't you know worship can release healing to your body? With our Alzheimer's patients and dementia patients, they said we bring musicians in because the sound begins to stimulate their brain. Oh! My God. All right, stop, stop, I'm sorry. An illustration will turn into a some mess, I'm telling you. Somebody just took medicine in that body just there. Ooh, my. I said, oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, listen, if you're listening to me here today, now, if you need some answers, you better hear it. I mean, this is God's word to you. You that are consumed with, with antidepressants, and I want to say, ain't nothing wrong. Take your medicine as long as you need to take it. But you need to know there's another way. Now, we don't believe, we believe that you to do what you need to do. But God don't just modify behavior. He heals and makes whole. Have you tried worship? Mm. I ain't talking about church religious routine. Have you tried worship yet? Have you? Hallelujah. You, you, I, I, know, I know you've been a little sick lately, but you have to realize every sickness is not physical. Sometimes it's a spirit of infirmity. And when Saul even was dealing with an evil spirit, he said, call for David. 
and when David began to just play those chords hey hallelujah whatever was on Saul when the sound of worship came into the throne room it began to lift and something happened just a few moments ago and some of you only worshiped enough to tease it but somebody need to lift up your hands and tell it you get free of it Woo. and so thank you so much so what happened was how glory be to God you know I want to say this y'all usually usually you know to try to be sensitive to onlookers I try to refrain from doing too much speaking in tongue but I realize the generation we live in everybody cuss out loud and they do everything else out loud so my son don't magnify your Lord Hey. Woo. Hallelujah. I think I need to speak a little bit more sometime because the Spirit begot the things of the Spirit. Hey! The Bible says, building up your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. My God, somebody needs something fanatical. Somebody dealing with something extreme. And extreme situations calls for extreme measures. Some of the things you're dealing with are not natural, they're spiritual. And you need to create a channel for God to operate. Woo! My God. You haven't worshipped God until it scared you. I've been by myself worshiping. Because if you're in a room and somebody's staring at you, you can tell, can't you? Yeah. And some of y'all are always distracted, so you can't tell. But, <laughs> but there's some of us in this room, we're like, yeah. somebody can be across the room, and you can feel it. Well, I've been at home or at the church worshiping by myself. I never forget this time. I was sitting at Rich and I was playing on the organ like Dawn was just playing and I was just worshiping God. I started out to learn a song and I went from learning the song to something in the song really hit my spirit. And I began to get where I kept playing and I began to worship God. And that's really where I wrote a song called I Need You. And I just started singing, I need you. I need you. I need you there to stand right by my side. Be there. Lord, answer my prayer, you know, and I'm just right, and I'm worshiping, and all of a sudden I said, mm. I said, oh, no, mm -mm. I'm going to the house. No, no, this is a true story. Because when we worship, we worship in spirit and in truth. In the natural, won't nobody there but me. But when I begin to worship in the spirit, the spirit world is full. We encompass with a great cloud of witnesses. See, at our mindset, the spirit realm is way off somewhere else and we over here. No, 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 it's parallel. But there's a wall up. But when we begin to worship, it creates a doorway. We come parallel when angels come in the midst. I'm telling y'all, when we worship it sometimes, I can feel when angels start coming down in the midst of us. This is why the early church, now see what I'm saying right now? Some of you, it's foreign and it sounds strange. No, no, the early church had an understanding of angels showing up to their worship experiences. To the point, Paul writes in letters, says, women, when you come, cover your heads. Because he's a cover your heads, because you don't want to offend the angels. What? We just run past that scripture. No, they had, my, they had a mindset to know that God was sending angels to minister to the saints. I mean, when Jesus was in the garden, God sent angels to minister to his flesh. There are moments you can be by yourself. That's why we don't pray to angels. We pray to God. And God sends what he wills. He'll, he can send your neighbor. He can send somebody from the church. Your pastor can text you and he can send help in the room that you can't see. You'll just come up off of your knees and feel strength from somewhere. I know what I'm talking about in here. I already got two angels been following me for a long time. I even know their names. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. 
Now, now, I'm going I'm, I'm, I'm to prove this to y'all, and this ain't no foreign doctrine. Yeah. Even when the angel came to Mary, yeah. he had to tell her, fear not, yeah. because she had an experience with the spiritual realm. Yeah. Every time God got ready to do something, he sent a messenger, he had to first speak to their fear. Yeah. Because their natural realm has now been invaded with something spiritual. And I want to speak to somebody in this room that when you worship, there's an exchange. The God of angel armies. That means when God comes, he doesn't come by himself. The whole crew comes with God. Oh, my God. My, my text today was Second Chronicles chapter 20. I just need y'all to know I got scripture for it. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1, and it came to pass that one day that the, all right, thank you, all right, that the children of Moab, and the children of Ammon and with them others beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Now it would be one thing if it was one thing at one time. But have you ever woke up in a season of your life and looked like it was one thing after the other? Ammonites, Moabites, Hittites, Ites, Ites, Bealites, Childrenites, Marriageite, Headacheite. All of it is one time. I'm talking about a moment in your life where it seems like you can't catch a breath. You can't catch a break. And this is the time Jehoshaphat was experiencing. But David says, when my heart is overwhelmed. Now, I need y'all to come out of the dark and just be honest with somebody and tell them, I know what it feels like to be overwhelmed. Come on, tell him, I know what it feels like for your heart to feel like it's going to jump out of your chest. I know what it feels like that if you say, if one more thing happens, I'm going to lose it. Don't, don't get it twisted. You see me in church and shouting. I'm not shouting and dancing just because everything in my life is going perfect. Sometimes my worship is cathartic. It's the only release I have to give God access to my situation. What did he say? Jehoshaphat said, what? All of this? Jehoshaphat said, y'all, let's go to church. And this is what some of y'all's issue is. The enemy knows what trigger to pull on you to pull you away from God. You know, I ain't, I ain't gonna even go to church. You know, and if I come to church, I ain't gonna, I mean, because I mean, if God is so good, why is all these bad things happening to me? I mean, does it even work? You know, Job, a real man, went through a real situation. And he was going through it because there was a conversation in the realm of the spirit that he was not privy of in the natural. Some of you are dealing with some things in the natural because of conversations that have happened in the spirit that you know nothing about. And Job could have perceived it as though he was being rejected by God. But look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, it could be that you've been proven by God. Hallelujah. You, it could be that God is trusting you with trouble. Everybody can be trusted with treasure, but can you be trusted with trouble? And Job's response to all of his children dying in one day, his, his house collapsed in one day, a multiple casket funeral. His response was to shave his head. We got to talk about that first. He shaved his head and his, he ripped his garment. That was his humanity. Worship does not mean you have to lose connection with reality. Worship means you don't have to deny facts. Yeah. Hallelujah. The fact is, the doctor said I got cancer. That's a fact. And I don't have to deny the fact. It's just that after I acknowledge the facts, I have to declare the truth. The fact is, there's cancer cells. The truth is, by his stripes, I am healed. The fact is, I don't have the money for college tuition next semester. That's a fact. I don't have to deny that. My worship doesn't deny the fact. But the truth is, my God shall supply all, I wish I had a church right there, all of my needs. Tell your neighbor, after acknowledging the facts, 
declare the truth. He didn't say, oh, my children are not dead. My children are not dead. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. God don't need you to be a superhuman. He just needs you to walk in the supernatural. So he, he shaved his head. His children are gone. All ten in one day. He ripped his garments. Then the next thing he did was not curse God. He said, the Lord give it. He went to church. The Lord take it away. Bless it. Be the name of the Lord. How well are you doing with your response? You, you, don't, you don't get to choose everything that comes on your desk and affects your house. And how well are you doing with the response? Joe Ozephat said, let's go to church. And they prayed and they worshiped. And when that happened, you know what happened? A door opened. And access to the mysteries of God, to the knowledge of God. When you worship, it gives you access to the prophetic. And you know what happened? They're worshiping. And Jehaziel stands up. We don't know him. He ain't got no prophetic card, no license. He ain't even got on the road that we got on. He stands up and says, thus said the Lord. See, see, when you worship, we shouldn't keep coming out of worship experiences with no revelation. Be open that when God stretch you out on the floor, I know some of you have never experienced it. I pray you do get a chance to experience it. I pray you get a chance to experience where your knees buckle under the power of God. And you said, nope, I'm not falling out. I'm not. Oh, man, I didn't fell out. I ain't talking about with somebody pushing you down. I ain't talking about that. Because sometimes growing up in church, I just went down because I got tired of being beat. They're like, ah, okay, I'll lay down. You win. Now, I'm talking about moments where either somebody laid hands on you or you were just standing by yourself. And the overshadowing of God. With no, I, it didn't happen to me with no usher. And I suffered no damage. Because the Holy Ghost laid me out and caught me. He's a comforter. <laughs> I pray you experience it. No, 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 really. I pray you I pray you experience it where he takes you somewhere and he shows you some things I know I usually wouldn't preach about this on a Sunday morning but I felt the leading of the Lord because I don't want you to be this close to the water and never take a drink he'll take you somewhere the Bible says when John went in the realm of the spirit on the Lord's day and he saw the awesomeness and the essence of the one God. The Bible says he fell like a dead man. Woo, hallelujah. Woo. When God got ready to bring the next out of Adam, he knocked him out. Because he said, Adam, you're not going to another level. I'm about to pull the next level out of you. It's called Eve, a woe man. Hallelujah. A man with a womb enough like you to be compatible but different enough to produce tell your neighbor I hope you experience it Jehaziel stands up and says oh wow there's a window open and I can hear what you hear Jehaziel you oh thank you Maurice he says, hearken ye all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you. Be not afraid nor dismayed. This is somebody's word. By reason of this great multitude. Tell your neighbor, God sees what's going on. But listen, what is God saying about it? This battle. It's not your, but it belongs to the Lord. The next verse, and I'm going to end with this verse right here. Tomorrow. Ain't no need to worry what the night is going to bring. It's going to be all over. 
tell your neighbor, if you can only make it through the night. So they said, tomorrow, listen, look at verse 15 says this. Look at verse 15. Verse 15 says, uh, uh, but you, don't, you ain't going to have to fight. You be not dismayed by reason of this great multitude. This battle is not yours. This is not your battle. It belongs to God. Verse 16, uh, tomorrow go against them. Go back to verse 15. You said this battle ain't mine. It's God's. Verse 16, tomorrow go against them. Verse 17. What verse 17? You ain't going to have to fight. Verse 15 said, the battle is not yours. Go against them, verse 16. Verse 17, you're not going to have to fight. But it said, set yourself and stand still. Put your hand on somebody's shoulder. Tell them, you don't have to fight, but you do have to show up. And some of you, that is your hardest assignment in the season, but it's your necessary season. I need you to run to three people and just tackle them and push them and tell them, keep showing up. Sometimes you have questions, but keep showing up. You may have challenges, but keep showing up. You may be going through warfare in your mind. But pull on somebody and tell them, keep, keep, keep showing up. It's going to happen for the people who show up. Everything ain't coming Amazon Prime. Everything ain't coming UPS. Everything ain't coming FedEx. There are some things of the store pickup only. Scream at somebody and tell them, I'm showing up. I'm, I'm showing up. When you see me, I'm coming through the door. You ain't even got to ask me if I'm coming to church next Sunday. You ain't got to ask me if I'm going to still praise him. You ain't got to ask me if I'm going to keep worshiping. I will bless the Lord. At all times. Good times, bless him. Bad times, bless him. With a job, bless him. Without a job, bless him. Feel good, bless him. Feel bad, bless him. Oh. Because something happens when I praise. I said, something happens when I pray. They keep calling you strong. But let me tell you the source of my strength. The joy of the Lord. I said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell him my praise ain't about my cuteness. My praise is my weapon. I'm not dancing for y'all. I'm dancing for him because something happened. Something happened. I feel the Lord in this room. I need about a hundred of you to cast your voice in this atmosphere. I feel the Lord create a channel. Create a channel. Create a channel for the supernatural. Create a channel for somebody's healing. Create a channel for somebody's deliverance. Something is opening up. There's a window above your head. There's a window above your head. There's a window. He says, I'll open up the window of heaven and pour you out. He said, prove me, prove me, prove me, prove me. Worship me and see what I'll do. Bless me and see what I'll do. Magnify me and see what I will do. You heard me say it a thousand times, Robert, that for many of you, your next miracle is connected to you following God's instructions, even when it don't make sense. You know, for some of you today, I said, clap your hands. You're like, why? Just start leaping. Why? Many of you will be distracted 
that you'll miss out on the miracle because you refuse to obey the instructions without understanding. Clarity is not necessary in obeying God. As a matter of fact, obedience will bring clarity. He said, you ain't got to fight. Okay, I don't have to fight. Show up. Why? Why I got to show up? Just show up. Mm -hmm. Just, hey, just, just show up. Because if you stay where you are, you're going to miss out on the performance. He says, stand still and see. I come to prophesy to about 15 of you in this room. This week, you're going to see something. With your own eyes. What happened? Then they go to battle. They got an answer because they worshiped. And then he told them to go to battle. And when they got to battle, they said, well, okay, are we here? He said, now worship me. And when they began to worship, they are surrounded by the enemy. And all of a sudden, angels of the Lord came down and caused confusion in the enemy's camp. And they begin to destroy one another. So why didn't God just do it though? Just, just do it. You could have did it without us. The whole earth is governed by God's law. And because the whole earth is governed by God's law, if God goes against his own law, that makes God a liar. And if God ever lies, he ceases to be the God that he is. God does nothing in the natural realm unless he's given access through the natural. Okay, I'm going to prove it to y'all. If my people. Now it's my desire to heal the land. But if my people, if my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal that God has never done anything great in the earth without human agreement. Uh-oh, y'all, y'all see teaching false doctrine. No, no, no. Ask and it shall be given. See, well, if God going to do it, he going to do it. No, no, he'll never go against his law. It's illegal for the spirit realm to interact with the natural realm without something in the natural realm giving the spiritual realm access. Even in our salvation. Uh oh. Even in our salvation. That's why the angel of the Lord had to get to a woman. God is a spirit and a spirit don't have blood to shed. So God needed a body. But somebody had to birth that body. And that's why the angel of the Lord comes to Mary and said, the Holy Spirit, he said, she, he said you're going to be pregnant with a child. She said, how will these things be? The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. He says, be, she says, be it unto me. Oh, oh. God says, I want to do it. But you got to give me permission. I want to do it, but you got to give me access. I want to save you, but I'm standing at the door knocking. I won't knock down the door. You got to give me access. <laughs> and what happened? Worship gave them their answer. And then worship gave them their victory. So this month as we talk about worship, don't make it a something you sit on the side of and don't limit it to this space ask the Lord to do something fill my house with your glory fill my house you ought to go from room to room saying Lord fill my house with your glory go in your children's room and pray Lord fill these rooms with your glory because some of you have great victory here and then going home is going back in a cave. No. But you ought to go in and say, uh-uh, no, no, no. Wouldn't it be so nice on your bad days if, 
if Jeff and Cornelius could just come on over there and, and set up in your living room, no matter even what your neighbors would think or say, wouldn't it just be nice when you're going through a moment that they'd be there and they'd start playing and Brad start playing the drums and you can start praising God in your kitchen? Yeah. It don't happen, right? But you know what you can do? You can create a channel. And all of heaven can invade that space. Listen to what the Bible says. In the presence of the Lord is the what? Fullness of joy. And let me tell you, where God is full, there's space for nothing else. I said where God is full, there is space for nothing. The Bible says man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I pray that you are blessed by the message today. And if you want to continue to get more inspirational, motivational, and even more gospel messages, I encourage you to follow our YouTube channel or subscribe to our podcast. And today we want to give you an opportunity to partner what we're doing domestically here at our local church and what we're doing all over the world. There are ways to give. And remember, when you sow, that seed may leave your hand, but it'll never leave your life. The Bible declares to us that when we sow, seeds are connected to harvest. Well, I want you to remember that I know what it feels like to cry until you have no more tears left to cry. But after you finish crying, don't stop. Get up and keep going.